feeling a little bit under the weather, disconnected from reality, grappling with the fragility of life in the face of an endless void of death. Me too. Ooh, scary pharmacy companies are coming for your third eye, ready to calcify your pineal glands and get you hooked on them. Get you hooked on them in the process. Enslave the masses. In all seriousness, medication and mental illness should be taken very seriously. And outside the bounds of this carefully and perhaps not, not so sensitively constructed script lies about 12 years of history with these meds, these pills, these happy drugs. Since the ripe old age of about 13 or 14, I have lived with clinical depression, anxiety disorder, and two separate dissociative disorders, most of which have been tackled through the use of psychiatric medication. I understand there are a lot of short-term and long-term side effects, downsides to being on these drugs. These are medications, they have, these have real effects on the biochemistry of our brain. And indeed they have large amounts of side effects and long-term impacts for me, but I still take them. I feel like the majority of people out there, the majority of people that I've talked to, the videos that I've seen on YouTube about medication tend to come from those who do not or have not experienced clinical depression. They kind of view depression as being a bit glum, as being a bit unmotivated, as having this illusion. I've, I've actually seen some people out there claim that depression is something that doesn't exist, thinking that the situational depression that a lot of people feel around negative life events, traumatic experiences, is something that overhauls and something that explains every aspect of depression. You fix this one thing, this situation, the depression goes away. That's how a lot of people view depression because that's the most common experience of depression that a lot of people have. But not many people have the experience of existing with, living with, long-term mental illness, long-term depression, clinical depression. And even there are some people out there who like to maintain this kind of masculine, stoic, sort of all self-important kind of aesthetic that anybody who has, has the goal to struggle with their mental health, to, to need medication to keep themselves safe, that they're some kind of weak other human and if they were in that situation themselves they, would, they wouldn't do the same and they'd be able to cope with it. I mean, these are generally things that I think a lot of people who have long-standing mental illness will be able to relate to because generally this is the kind of rhetoric that's been spun around us for a long time. People not really seeing it because these things, mental illness, to a certain degree, it's, it's invisible. You can't see it. It's, it's related to our internal worlds, how we think, how we perceive things, how we feel inside. Not something that you can accurately say, oh hey, there's a depressed person over there with a little rain cloud sort of floating above their head or a little, little black dog sort of trotting along beside them. It's not like that. It's also not sadness. It's not the same as sadness. It's not feeling a little glum, a bit under the weather. In fact, one of the horrible aspects of living with long-term depression, it's very rare for me to feel sadness. Sadness to me is like this once in a year kind of thing, this, this kind of experience. To some degree, it's something that I want to experience because it's cathartic. It allows you to sort of push through things after you have a good old cry if you get out of your system. You tend to feel a little bit better about it and be able to process it a lot more. I exist on this this sort of anhedonic wavelength that my sort of emotional curve is flattened so much both by my mental illness and also by my medication that it's very very difficult for me to experience those peaks in, in happiness, those peaks in excitement and also those lows in terms of sadness and it's not depressed, depression is not sadness. From my early teens to early 20s, I've been on psychiatric medication. I've been for a few. I started with Prozac. I went on to sertraline, which was awful. Prozac kind of made me feel like a little bit of a psychopath. Sertraline just ramped up my anxiety to like ungodly levels. And citalopram is the one that I've landed on, one that I can tolerate fairly well. Alongside these SSRIs, these selective 
serotonin reuptake inhibitors, I also take an anti-anxiety drug, something that helps with sleep, something that can stimulate people's appetite as well, but it's also heavily sedating. It kind of evens out the anxiety producing effects of the SSRIs that I experience and helps to sort of balance myself. It makes me sedated, sure, lots and lots of different side effects, but it balances out and it makes living somewhat tolerable. You may be asking, well, why, why in God's name have my parents, why in God's name have my doctor put me on these really, really strong drugs for, for a kid, you know, a 14-year-old child? Well, the thing is, depression is not only something which is invisible, it's not only something that impacts your life, it's also pretty dangerous. And for me, when I was that age, medication helped me a lot. It stopped me from offing myself, basically, on many occasions in my life. The times at which I have been most at risk is when I stop taking my medication. I'm not just talking about that withdrawal from stopping and the after effect. I mean, like, fully stopping and just going back to normal life was, was a pretty significant danger to myself in that state. Medication also allows me to function to a semi-reasonable level, and I say semi-reasonable level because it doesn't erase my mental illness. Being bed-bound in heavy states of dissociation and depression, or not constantly experiencing panic attacks throughout the day, which I did do, comparing myself as I am now on medication to, to, to the, those two experiences, I can function a lot better. Is it fun? No, it is definitely not. It's great for... The <laughs> SSRIs are great for sort of stopping me from getting too, too low, but they also stop me from getting too high. They stop me from enjoying things as much, stop me from feeling as excited or as happy as I would do if I wasn't on medication. It's kind of a double-edged sword in a sense. Does it make me feel flat? Yes. It makes life more boring. It makes life less exciting. It makes makes life less emotional. I don't feel as myself as, as I did do. And should I stop taking them because of the side effects? At this point in my life, most likely not. And not for the wide, long length of time that I was on them back into my childhood. Is it because I'm reliant on them? Yeah, I am. But I, <laughs> I do a hell of a lot more than just take medication. People think, okay, Oh, you, you know, you, you're gonna take these happy pills, you just you just take them and that's gonna fix all your problems and you just don't want to put in the hard work yourself. It's absolutely false, not true. The amount of things that I do to maintain my mental health alongside medication would absolutely flabbergast most people. 